Hey guys, it's Aiden again, and today I'm going to be doing my first Gotham video. Today I'm going to go through the major pros and major cons I had with season one of Gotham. Overall, it was a good season. It was not perfect, it was not as good as The Flash, but it was not terrible, if you know what I mean. But I'm going to go into more depth than that. So, pro number one, the Joker in the form of Jerome. I thought this was a very good, uh, a very good, uh, portrayal. This actor, uh... Dominic Monaghan, I think? What was his name? I forget what his name was. But he was really good. He was a really good young actor, and he did really well with the, with the script he was given. And he, it was pretty terrifying. It was a mix between Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger's portrayals, I think. And that was really impressive. I hope he can get an Oscar no I hope he can get an Emmy nom from that. I don't know if he can, though. Um, and then, con number one. Barbara and her stupid blood points. I don't want to be negative on this channel, but just the way- it's not her act- the actress's fault. I'm just saying the actress is really good, but she was- the writing was really bad for her. She was given bad uh, decisions, and she was a really poorly written character. That's why I didn't like her plot points and everything. And then pro number two, Falcone and Maroni. I really love this, uh, this back and forth between them. It- it really does seem like real-life mob, mob bosses that go back and forth, and it's very interesting. And, uh, yeah, they're very, they're pretty realistic, and they're interesting characters, which is what I really liked. And then con number two. Catwoman is already Catwoman. This is honestly set up way too early. 20 years too early, actually. That's kind of way too early in, the, in advance. It's a little off-putting that it's not an origin, it's just... Bam! Catwoman. There. She's already Catwoman. And then, pro number three, Catwoman is already Catwoman. Now let me explain this one. There are... there's a con and a pro to this one. Because it also shows that these writers actually do understand Catwoman as a character, which is interesting, and shows more depth in the writing and in just the show in general, which is very good. Which is a very good thing for a show like this. And con number three, Weak use of Arkham. Now, when they said they were going to introduce Arkham, and when they had the first introduction for Arkham, I thought it would be a major plot point and would lead into the season finale. Guess what? It didn't. It was just a random plot point to get to get uh, to get uh, Jim dating that doctor. That's basically the only reason that they had Gotham in the season. With also also that two part uh, with that character, with that villain character. But I just felt like this was weak use of Arkham, and I didn't appreciate it that much. Pro number four. I thought this was a great use of the penguin. The actor is so good. This this is a great origin for the story for that character. It's a great starting off point for this legendary Batman villain, which I'm sure they will use in the in the new Ben Affleck movies. Which will be very interesting to see how they do that. And then, con number four. Fish Mooney is not an interesting character. I know the plot tried to make her interesting and tried to make you feel like, ooh, who is she? Ooh, what she's do what's she doing? No. It's just Jada Pinkett Smith using a random New York accent that doesn't really sound like a New York accent, that I don't know what accent it is, and trying to be interesting, but it just doesn't work, and I don't think she really tried that much. And then, pro number four. It, pro, yeah, pro number five. Jim Gordon, I love the how the actor portrayed the character. He very much is a very good adaptation of this character. He is Jim Gordon, like he is in the comics, and how he should be, which is which is very good. I did like Gary Oldman, but I feel like this actor is sort of an improvement because he's like a younger version, and he not necessarily an improvement, but he's just as good with a, a very good intro, intro to the character that could become. The Gary Oldman version. And then, con number five. Jim Gordon's relationships. <sighs> Not comic accurate. I know they realized that Barbara wasn't in an interesting love interest, but and then they gave him a Dr. Leslie Tompkins. Then, <sighs> it's not comic accurate. He marries Barbara, he has kids with Barbara, and then they get divorced. I don't know how they're going to lead into this, into that after this, especially with the season finale plot of Barbara being insane. 
I don't know how they're going to be able to keep on going with that, with that back and forth, but I hope they do. Pro number six, the Riddler. This is a very, very cool use of the Riddler. Corey Michael Smith, he's a very cool dude. I follow him on Twitter. He's, he really appreciates the fans, and I really appreciate that, because it shows he loves the... He, he appreciates the feedback and everything. He's a really good actor, and he did really good with, with this character, especially in the season finale. That, like... That montage sort of sort of thing of him just slowly unraveling, and this was a villain you could root for, which is something I don't think I've seen on a show for quite a while, and that's very interesting. And then con number six, introduct in the introduction of the venom material that was used to create Bane. This is kind of a weak use of it because I feel like they could use that as like a as like a major plot point that they could just leave there for like for Batman movies or whatever. It would be interesting if this was the origin story for Ben Affleck's Batman, because that that would mean that they this could lead into those movies, but I don't think it is, so this is kind of odd. It, it's, it's not that this introduction was bad, it just felt a little weak. It just felt like it, it, it was a weird episode for them to put it in, because it was a weak episode with not really much else going on. And then, pro number seven, Victor Zaz. This is a seven, not this. Okay. Um, the actor was very good. It shows how crazy he is and how he actually does etch, etch like a number into his arm for every time he kills a person. And this was a good, this was a good lead in for that character. It's a good origin. It shows that he hasn't been crazy. For, he has, he didn't just become crazy like that. He was crazy for a while. And then con number seven. The weird ending scene of the finale. This was weird. I don't know the full context, so I don't know why this is bugging me so much. I don't necessarily... It, I, this is honestly just nitpicking here, because I don't really understand it as much. But I don't know the full context, but it seemed like it was ending with Bruce discovering what seemed to be a previous version of the Batcave. This is bad for numerous reasons. If this really is the Batcave and there's already a bat suit prepared for him that his father made, that's so, so inaccurate. His father didn't want him to do anything like that. He just made the choice himself. He had the proper motivations and he used it for something else. And that's why I don't feel this worked. And overall, this was not a bad season. Don't get me wrong. It's a good crime drama, but I don't think it's as good as it could have been. If they made it more like Arrow and like made it made it show how dark and gritty this stuff can be while also leading into a bunch of comic stuff really well, then it would be a really good show. It has that first part, but not that second part. If it did, then it would be an excellent show, and it would probably be up there with Flash and Arrow. But overall, I gotta give this season a B-. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was just... Love, hate, it's there. Um, so basically that's it for today for this video guys be on the lookout for the for the video that I told you guys about of uh, Listing all of the DC superheroes within the Flaro universe they're a lot more than you might think and uh, They announced a bunch and I'm gonna explain all of those for you guys in the next video so if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like comment and subscribe if you've seen flash in Gotham season one and just tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, adios amigos.